I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Hi, guys. Welcome to AfterBuzz's Real Housewives of New York City After Show. I'm your host, Hollywood Leon. It's my favorite day of the week. Joining me today is my family, Allie. Hello. Excited to be here. Thanks for coming on, my love. We're missing Chelsea, but we do got Brandon Lee Jr., Ronnie. Hey, boo boo. <laughs> I miss Chelsea a lot already. No. Yeah. <laughs> Such a good episode. This episode had a lot of balance, which I yeah. like. And um, but we're gonna make it through, us three. We're gonna we're gonna power through. It'll be fun. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Chelsea is uh she's picking up her boyfriend today. They've been separated for months. So she's gonna be doing the dirty all day long. So let's have a good night. <laughs> Um, oh my god it's a really interesting episode i'm trying to get you guys geared up you know give you guys a little bit of a push i hope you got your calluses ready because it's gonna be a long episode you guys there's gonna be a lot of things we're gonna talk about a lot of jokes i got a lot of jokes today because these women i mean they were beat by bushes they were basically at a gay bathhouse. they all went crazy drunk on each other so ronnie you know i got the popper jokes all ready to go I was ready to text you about it, but I'll, I'll wait, I'll wait. <laughs> well, let's start with you. What did you think about the episode overall um, in comparison to what, what, been, what we've been getting the last couple weeks? Well, I think when we initially brought into the season, we were like, oh, how's it going to do without Bethany? So there was always that, that, how's it going? And I feel like some of these episodes were becoming too angry, you know what I mean? And that could be a Dorinda problem. But this to me had balance. I did say that a second ago. And I think I really felt like we need more of them to be separate. Like I don't need them to always be together. Right. Um, so I felt like, you know, having Leah, uh, Leah's scene separately was nice. I felt like kind of seeing Sonia, I'm sorry, I'm getting everyone confused. Uh, seeing Ramona in her own space, like kind of doing what she does. Obviously she is a little much with her whole socialite thing, but I like to see that. So um, I felt like we built a good storyline with a lot of the ladies. I do wish, and I thought of you actually, Leon. I do wish we had more Luann. I feel like she's like not prominent. You know, we have this big uh, tagline, you know, raise the stage, you know, light the lights, you know, I'm taking center stage, but like, we don't seem to see her and that kind of disappoints me. But all in all, I like the episode. I really did. I think we'll see more of Luann in a little bit. Um, I think we're just getting through, you know, some of the rough parts, the rap, um, you know, the rafters. Uh, Allie, what did you think about this episode being kind of like a reminder of what happened last episode? Because Leah's like, are we not going to acknowledge what happened? Totally. I, um, I completely agree with Ronnie, though I do think this episode is great. I think that so far they've done a great job of, of setting up this season. But yeah, I was so happy that Leah kept pulling these girls like back down to earth, like hold up, so much just happened and we're not even gonna address it. Like we're just gonna move on. Um, so they're just trying to, you know, put a bandaid over the problem. And Leah's like, no, we need to really get to the core, figure out what's going on here. And she did her best to do that. I wouldn't say it went as well as she had hoped, but uh, overall, yeah, a great episode. And um, I also liked uh, the moments where they weren't always together, even though those moments are great and make for great entertainment. But I do think we're gonna have to see them a little bit more clicky and a little bit off um, with maybe just one or two of the girls because there's just a lot of drama right now. Yes, and we're gonna be getting to all those scenes throughout the episode. So make sure to stay with us until the very end. Um, we open up with Lu uh, Luann and Leah and, you know, they're having lunch. And the one thing I noticed about the very top of the episode is nobody felt good. Everyone's like, ah, I know. I'm like, y'all got coronavirus. <laughs> y'all got the COVID or something. Early stages. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Early on COVID. Yep. They, 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 they were there. I think so. <laughs> Well, uh, Leanne and, and uh, Leah are talking and they're getting to know each other. And uh, usually a normal person would have been scared off by now. But Leah is here to say, like, you guys, I like that we're all messed up. Um, I'm not about the ganging up thing, though. You know what I mean? I think there needs to be a balance. And Dorinda saying she's not interested. Girl, I mean, you're even talking about it with your life coach. We will get into that. But right before we can get really into the nitty gritty, Tinsley comes up. 
And she's like, yeah, you guys, I was ganged up on, you know, I like gang bangs, not gang ups. <laughs> so um, this, this was interesting. Um, what did we think about the top of the episode with Leah Luann and Tinsley? This is a clicky kind of scene that you're talking about, Allie. Um, yeah. What did you think about the nuts of this scene? Um, I like these three together. I think we've seen a bond between Lou and Leah so far with their shared past and everything. So I'm really here for the three of them, actually. Um, I, I think it's funny and it's really, it doesn't make sense. Like the three of them don't make sense, but I, I'm here for it. But I, I feel, again, I have to be Team Tensley um, again for this episode. I just, I, I agree that she can get annoying and she can sound like a little dog and all of that, but that's not reason to just hate someone and to attack someone. Everyone's different. We all handle our emotions differently. But um, I thought the top of the show did a great job at kind of letting us know, okay, this is kind of still going on. There's still some tension and they addressed it. And yeah, I don't know. And they gave us a little flashback. Ronnie, what did you think about Sonia <laughs> throwing up in the van? Yeah. We didn't see that. <laughs> I liked it because, you know, we were at a point where it was too much of Sonia getting wild. So this particular episode, we didn't see any wild Sonia, really. She wasn't drunk. And I liked that. But it did give a little taste that we that little nugget that we still need to know that she does go, you know, batshit crazy. And, and it was a great reference to know that, of course, she would do that. You know, um, I'll get into my opinions on Sonia in a little bit as we go on. But as far as Leah and Luann, I completely agree with what um, Ali said. They are such a good dynamic. And I think it's because. Luann speaks her truth and like Leah doesn't really get offended very easily and I think that's really cool um it's a trait that I do like about Leah you know she's very like let's just like chill let's like just have fun you know not all of Leah's traits I enjoy but that's one that I like and I like those two together whether it's because they have a bond over you know being having a mugshot or whatnot it's just a really cool bond my Tinsley thing though I do feel like um I don't just a little bored with her you know I think she had given us two really two horrible seasons prior and it was kind of like how does she deserve to continue to stay on the show so this season at the beginning she kind of jumped and gave us something uh and I feel like now we're not getting anything yet again as we didn't get the first two seasons so she's she's dwindling a little bit for me well she is going to be departing soon so I don't know I'm here for a smooth departure um, and I like what she's given us this season. While the girls are being clicky, there's another click hanging out. And it's uh, Sonia, Ramona, and Dorinda. They're going to go work out. And, you know, there's a little subtle shade that's happening there. Even um, <laughs> Sonia walks in and she's like, what's your name? And the girl's like, Bergen. She's like, okay, good. Not Birdie. Got it. Because uh, <laughs> if you remember the Birdie shade uh, yeah. last season or last yeah, at that, oh, that was the most cringeworthy Ramona episode <laughs> ever because it was a good cause. And I, yeah, I caught that on my second viewing. The first viewing, I didn't catch it. But Sonia, she's always giving you something, isn't she? Yeah, you gotta watch out because there's always something there. Um, and so this beginning scene is what they're happening. There's a little tennis ball scene between the, the two cliques. Um, you know, I wanna move on and kind of get into the nitty gritty. Luann says that there's a lot of screeching, you know? and. Ramona says the same thing, but like Ali says, that's not a reason to kind of go after her people. And I don't understand like why they're even bringing this up. These women are known for just screaming and hollering yeah. at each other. It's like they have no room to talk about someone's voice octaves. <laughs> <laughs> Leah says, you gotta thug her out. You gotta thug her out. You gotta tell people to respect you. So if you would check her, she would be like, I respect it. But would it be that easy? Would it be that easy? Do you guys agree that Leah, um, you know, she plays it kind of like the street kind of smart. And she's like, if you check someone, they're going to know not to mess with you. What do we think about this, Ronnie? Um, you know, that's a great, I, I'm glad you asked that because I like that it works for Leah. And I also, um, I did many after bus shows with, with Spicy Mari and she would always say, anytime we did an after show, you, you teach people how to treat you. So while that makes a lot of sense for Leah, what worries me is that's not Tinsley. While I don't have a lot of sympathy for Tinsley, I just don't want her to be put in a position where she's got to be this thug, like, it, you know, in, in Leah's words, you know, it's one of the problems I have with Real Housewives of Potomac 
that it started as a very eloquent show, very etiquette driven show. And now it's just who could be the loudest and who could, you know, wave a knife. And I don't really like that for this show. I like when these ladies are able to get you with the words, but I don't necessarily need my soft, meek Tinsley to boss up. Like that's not her character. I don't want to see that. Again, I always reference that I watched her CW show all those years ago and I, I liked Tinsley. I do feel like she's not in the right space. What I think I want Tinsley to do is not be a thug. I want her to use her words. I thought of this last week and I, I'm surprised I didn't mention it. Why in the heck when, when Dorinda was sort of manipulating the Richard thing as grief, you know, like you had said, Lee, and you can't put a price on the grief, you know, that's like everyone's own thing. Tinsley also lost her father, you know, so they're, 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 I just need her to use her words more. I don't need Tinsley to be a thug. I do not. That, that <laughs> doesn't work for me. Ali, what do you think about Ramona playing in the pond with Dorinda? And then in the confessional, she's like, she's victimizing Tinsley. I, oh my goodness. My thoughts were going back and forth the whole time when it came to Ramona. And as confused as we probably all were, because she was being a little um, fake because she was saying one thing to Dorinda and then, but at the end of the day, like everything Ramona did say, I thought was kind of fair game. And um, why can't Ramona go and have these conversations with Dorenda, who's been her friend for all these years, but then still care about um, someone else? Like, I, I kind of liked everything Ramona gave us this episode, if I'm being honest, but um, and I, like, we'll, we'll get to it. Why the intervention? And Ramona's like, no, don't do that. What do you, do you think an intervention is a good idea, Allie? Yeah, I do, because, I think that's the only thing that's really going to solve anything, if it's even solvable. But um, <laughs> I do, what? I don't think it's gonna make Dorinda blow up. I think it will, but I, I <laughs> we've already seen her blow up. And at this point, like, I feel like we've seen it. I don't know if she could get any scarier than that would be quite an episode. So, but I do think at the end of the day, they have to just have a talk and just the two of them, like not the other girls, just the two, like Ronnie said, they both experienced grief. Like they can talk about that. And, and also like Ronnie said, Tinsley has always been herself, even though people may not like her. She's not pretending to be Leah or to be this person. This is just how she is. And she's a little more fragile than the other girls. Dorinda is a bully. Dorinda needs to apologize. And Tensley does need to speak to her and actually express her feelings. But yeah, I'd love to see these two just have a sit down, talk it out type of moment because I feel like they could eventually just hug it out and be friends. I know it seems really dark, right? I see, I think it's dark right now, but you two, I think, I, I do think Dorinda is going to realize her errors. I really do. And I think she is not gonna grovel but I think she's truly going to feel sorry and really pain ridden and apologize. I can see this happening. And I don't think Tinsley's gonna be a punk about it. I don't think Tinsley's gonna be too, she might be hurt, but I think Tinsley will reconcile based on Dorinda's apology. And I think that's coming this season for sure. For everybody watching, we wanna let you know, thank you so much for watching and supporting our channel. Make sure to click subscribe if you're just passing through. Uh, check out all the socials. We got a lot of content coming up for you guys specifically. But um, I wanted to bring up the fact that Ronnie's right. Dorinda has a heart of gold. So that's what I'm saying. For the people that are watching, like I know we're giving a hard time to Dorinda, but we give credit when it's due. We know these people have sides that are vicious and are, you know, for the camera, but we're all hurt. We're all lashing out at each other. <laughs> Even here in our real lives, like we do it to the people we love. I could give you an example right now, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> we all do it to each other. But I do feel that Dorinda is going to come around and I do feel she's going to be very apologetic at the reunion. She has to be. I mean, this is not a good look. So let's get into the life coach thing. You know, she said she's frustrated. But, you know, then again, you also say you're not interested in Tinsley. This is you not interested in Tinsley? Girl, you're interested in Tinsley. But she says it's all too much. You know, she says it, uh, she's too different to understand her. I don't buy that. Just because we're different doesn't mean I'm not going to understand you. Like, girl, stop it. Like, the world is made out of rainbows and colors. Difference does not give you a pass. So maybe the grief thing, you'll play that card, but I just don't buy it. And she just, I just want her to say why she doesn't like Tinsley. Just say it, just say what is the reason because 
you know, Cardi B, what was the reason? What was the reason? <laughs> because girl, I don't see it with the life coach. Allie, what do you think about this thing with the life coach? I, I totally, everything you just said, I'm like, yes, the life coach scene, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of hearing, like, if I'm being real, we've heard Dorinda's issues now for a few episodes and nothing's changing. She can go and talk it out. She can go to therapy, but at the end of the day, I, I think she does have a problem with Tinsley, but at this point, she's lashing out at anyone and everyone who gets in her way. And she is angry and bitter. And I don't know. I think she just needs to maybe chill for a minute, take a break from the girls. Obviously, we don't want to see that because it's the show and she's a housewife and she knows that that's her responsibility. But I'm just saying, I wish she would almost just take a vacation on her on her own like go to europe or something like just get away find yourself again because right now we're just seeing her attack anyone who does not agree with her or understand her or like all of these issues and i do feel for dorenda i mean who doesn't like of course we feel bad for her but again she's just being a bully and she's taking out all of her pain on everyone else not excusing her bad behavior I actually like these scenes. You know, I have a problem with these shows where it's just amped up with no real stakes and, you know, one's yelling at another really, really fast. I like the scenes where, let's let's give an example, like a Dorinda versus a Luann, you know, th those types of scenes, if they ever had an issue, uh, drawing from the past, of course, uh, it, it comes from a place and they've known each other for all these years. You know, Elisa's new, new Jill Zara and, and Bethany. I like it when there's some real stakes with that being said, there is this weird thing where we're not understanding why why Dorinda is so, you know, bent up over Tinsley. But I do, you know, it, it's kind of like the therapy session years ago as Bethany was with her therapist, all roads lead to Rome. So I actually like us discovering it above and beyond uh, that the, the life coach was gorgeous and they showed a lot of scenes <laughs> of him and I know they did that for us. Uh, <laughs> And I just, to me, it is a, it is a refreshing scene because I don't want to gloss over that. I want... Dorinda to by way of the life coach to talk out her issues like I need that that's the only way she's going to grow and honestly if they edited that out it doesn't give me much for the show you know what I'm saying like I don't need to know she got better I want to see her get better and that's good for me well Ronnie she brings up the floods she brings up the memories she's saying like look I'm not pulling this out of my ass like I had a flood in my house and then I had to go fix it and doing that I unpacked a lot of things and it just felt like the memories came flooding back. She didn't exactly say it in those words. Those are my words. <laughs> she should have said it like that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, that's basically what she was saying because she's bringing up the grief thing. And I'm like, stop bringing up Richard and the grief. No one is going to feel on a level that they're going to give you a pass for it. You know what I mean? Maybe you should just say, you guys, maybe I didn't grieve right mm -hmm. or properly because you guys I went to this house and the memories hit me in the face like a ton of bricks or something like yeah. I just didn't know I had this in me and now I'm unhappy and yeah. now and then like we would feel for you but instead yeah. it's just of other crap about not being unhappy because she just had a breakup and blah 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 it's like girl we're all miserable okay yeah. we're all miserable <laughs> in our own way so join the club because we're all victims too, like remote. Like, like, <laughs> like Sonia said, like we can't be victims, you know? So I don't know. No, it, it, it's exactly, we were texting with Chelsea earlier today and the, the key point, and I liked Dorinda quite a bit, you know, she wasn't an early on favorite, but this season I'm still, for whatever reason, I'm still siding with her on a lot of issues. But the key point, and Chelsea mentioned this when we were texting earlier, Dorinda's not taking accountability. And you make such a good point that if she were to just say, oh, wow, I didn't realize that I went from this to this to this. Like, like we see that a lot in Vanderpump Rules. I know we're not supposed to talk about Vanderpump Rules here, but like Jax goes from losing a father to an engagement to a this to a that. And then when those things are over, you're kind of looking up and it's quiet and it's dark and you're not living the life you want. I thought the biggest change with Dorinda was when she moved apartments. You know what I mean? Once she got that empowerment, she realized that her life was valued at a different space. So um, accountability will go a long freaking way for this lady. For sure. Well, we're going to get into my favorite part of the episode. But, you know, while we're on topic, um, if you do want to hear more about how much I despise Jax and the Vanderpump Rules franchise, <laughs> make sure to watch It's Bravo Bitch on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. This week, a total hottie from New York, Pet Shop Boy, is going to be on. Oh, and I've chatted with them before. Yeah. 
great. He's uh, kind of Instagram famous for dancing uh, in the Lisa Renna Halloween outfit. Like he won Halloween last year. And he just interviewed um, uh, uh, Leah also. Leah Mop? Le- yeah, he just interviewed yeah. her on, on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, said, I said that on the show. I'm like, he just interviewed Leah and Jennifer Iden. So hopefully so he'll bring us some good tea. Make sure to check that out. Wednesdays, it's Bravo Bitch, uh, produced by After Buzz TV. So thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Let's join uh, Let's join the ladies in this bathhouse. <laughs> I love a bathhouse. Oh! That's the first time you said that. <laughs> You're dirty. Uh, oh my God. I just love <laughs> sitting around getting pampered um but um you know tinsley said she sleeps with her jewelry on so she's like i don't trust this place <laughs> to say this about the new york ladies y'all need to relax there is life below canal street they, the weather doesn't change okay yes there is more gates you pull down but get with the downtown vibe hello carol radzik like you got to be with the down that's where the parties are at there's no parties <laughs> on the, in the 70s on the upper east side there's nothing out there but beautiful brownstones and you know the freaking uh what's that the (laughs) the beacon theater you know like come on i know new york like the back of my hand um let's see you know you're old when you complain about the downtown but all the ladies went in and they look like handmaid's tale what a (laughs) perfect scene this was the funniest scene to me between getting beat by the bushes um to the sex talk and leah's butt Let's start with uh, Allie. Yeah, this was definitely, I think, my favorite scene, maybe out of this whole season, close to the pool scene with Sonia and Leah and Tinsley. But, oh, my goodness, this was hilarious. I I mean, I'm crying right now, and you were making (laughs) me laugh so hard. But it was so true. Like, as much as I think that the girls need to get off their high horse, it's still a spa. Like, come on. It's not that bad. We're young. It's downtown. Like, it's cool. It's hip. At the end of the day, this is why we love this show because they are better than that. And this is the Real Housewives of New York. And if they weren't, if they didn't act that way, it would have been a different show. Um, so I loved hitting their little comments about it. Sonia, when she first showed up, um, she said she said graffiti land or something. I was just so, oh, I love her. But um, yeah, I thought the whole scene was funny. Ramona with the bushes and getting whacked. And she was like, don't get my hair dirty. And um, and then they just walk downstairs and they're drinking vodka. I don't know. I've never seen a spa like that, but I do want to go there. <laughs> it's a, it's a old improved spa, Ronnie. Ginger vodka, yeah, your name. Would I what? Ginger vodka, yeah, your name. Oh yeah, yeah, I would. Okay. I would. I would. Um, this scene was fantastic. This was actually the opposite of what I was saying a bit ago when Tinsley did the boxing with 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 the guy, and it was supposed to be this fish out of water scene. I don't think that played well. This played well. And whichever side you're on, that's fine. You could be cool downtown or you could be elite up to, uh, uh, you know, Upper East Side kind of chick. Doesn't matter. What I love is the fish out of water element. You know, I, I've got an apartment in Bushwick. So it's way, if, if those ladies didn't like below uh, 14th, they definitely not gonna like, you know, Myrtle Broadway, I'm just saying. Um, so uh, with that being said, um, I thought it played out well. And it's just like what uh, Ali said, that we need these women to look within disgust. Like we want Luann to be like, oh God, it's a, it's a, it's a pending grade. Like that's, that's what this show is. And I thought it played really well and cute for everybody. It did make Leah look like she was um, talking trash about them, you know, making them sound too pretentious, which she does sometimes. Uh, but it also didn't make the ladies feel too stuffy. Yes, they made some depre- uh, self-deprecating jokes, and I thought it was really cool. And then it just gave me, Leah, uh, Leanne, you, you would agree, bathhouse vibes, baby. You know, it's a dirty, dirty world down there. And we love it. You know, shake the tits, baby. Shake the tits. Oh, God, we've been in quarantine for so long. That's automatically what we thought about when we saw this scene. I was like, <gasps> I've so been in the towel and had men beating me with bushes. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I thought it was really funny. You know, Sonia's like, I'm gonna get into s and There's something about getting beat and it does make you feel better. So lots of little jokes in there. Uh, let's talk about the meat of the episode. And that's this, this scene right here in this spa. They go downstairs, you know, the vodka's flowing and Ramona, uh, Ramona, <laughs> she tries to be like, you know, I'm not perfect. And Sonia's like, uh-oh, when she starts a sentence. Oh, like, that was funny. 
That was funny. That was so funny. I'm not perfect, but Lord knows when you are upset, you just go for the jugular. You just go for it for the kill. And Dorinda's like, yeah, you should know. You do it all the time. You should recognize the behavior. Like anything that Ramona had for Dorinda, Dorinda had it right back. She's like, you're a little scary. And Dorinda's like, yeah, I've been scared <laughs> plenty of time so it's like it was just not gonna go down like that dorinda was gonna be like hi my name is pot and your name is kettle ronnie yes. what do you think about this i think it gets hard for me to defend dorinda when it comes to that um i thought she was okay so on the bad side of it dorinda's behavior no good right that was a little petty yeah even if ramona stuck her her you know sh she shouldn't have said nothing you still don't need to lay into her but now when we talk about Epic Housewives commentary, I like that from Dorinda, because let me tell you, I, I feel like I see in my head the people who write out their rebuttals, you know what I mean? But that to me was Ramona came with her stuff and Dorinda was gonna bite anybody's head off. And that, we have to give a little credit because that is why we watch the show. On a personal behavior, no. On a great line that I wanna see uh, you know, recited later on, we give Dorinda major points. The only part that I really defend or, or want to take Dorinda's perspective, because I don't know if the rest of the panel is, is that I still continuously don't know why, maybe it's the edit, why when the conversations are happening, does Tinsley be quiet and then wait for things to get excited and then she chip chaps these weird things. I'm gonna tell you right now, I got a lot of love for a lot of people, but nobody, like I respect everybody, but you can't tell me to respect you. Like that's not, like I don't, I don't, like I, I got love for you. I respect off, off the general standpoint. You don't tell me how to act towards you. Um, so that part I thought was a little tacky by Tinsley. Like, I just don't know what she's trying, huh? You can if you're a boss. But yeah. she's not, and that's why, this is why problem with Tinsley. Which lane are you playing? Are you playing soft or are you playing like, you know, respect me, and, and this is what I believe in, this is what I stand in. And that, I think, is where I could side, side with Durant. I know Chelsea wouldn't be a fan of this comment, but I don't know. I, I struggle with that a little. That's all I got to say about that. Ali, what did you think about um, Ramona? Because Leah's like, a toast <laughs> to us. And Ramona's like, take your hat off. <laughs> I love Ramona this episode you guys like everything she said I just thought it was appropriate I don't know I mean well nothing she ever says is quite appropriate but it's funny and it's never like too too harmful so it's fine again Leah doesn't really get offended at anything which is nice um but what okay so I I don't really think Dorenda like had a right to snap back at Ramona in that moment just because uh, Leah was bringing up like let's clear the air like they wanted to address the issue with Tinsley um, and instead now we're just about to get this like little cattiness with Ramona and Dorenda which isn't really what we needed but um again like Dorenda was right like Ramona does always go for the jugular too like and they're both very similar in that way so it was entertaining to say the least but um and with Tinsley I get what you mean, Ronnie, like she'll just kind of join at the wrong times. But again, that's such a easy thing for us to say from someone just watching it, you know, like, oh, I would have done that differently or she should have done this. But we never know what it's like being in the moment. And maybe she was just so upset she couldn't find the words. So overall, I'm still standing by Tinsley. But uh, this scene was definitely entertaining. <laughs> I feel like when Tinsley was sitting there listening like kind of like a double dutcher, like gonna, gonna jump in and stuff. She couldn't have jumped in right there. It was such an intricate part of the conversation. Someone is standing up for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like when someone's like, she has been through a lot. You don't do this to her. The girl's not gonna be like, yeah, I've been through a lot. <laughs> yeah, you're like. <laughs> you just like sit back and let her do her thing. Cause that's what Ramona was doing. It just didn't work because Dorinda was like, I'm not gonna let you have this moment. Anything you throw out, I'm going to throw it back at you because you are a motherfucking monster as well. <laughs> you are a monster, you know, but she's our monster. She's our monster. You said that, and yes. that's true. That's very true. <laughs> um, you know, like I said, it just was not going to be a smooth landing. These ladies are sandpaper. Um, <laughs> let's move on to the kind of end of the episode. We meet Leah's sister, Sarah. 
which was a nice dynamic to see more of the family. Yeah. She brought up the drinking thing. And we see later on in the preview for the next episode, this bitch is crazy. She cannot be drinking. Like you, okay, like uh, I <laughs> have been there a million times, don't get me wrong. But like when you throw up, when people are babysitting you, or when like the next day you have the alcohol guilt because you just said too much crap, oh. you need to take a break mm -hmm. because it's supposed to be fun. You know, we're supposed to all have a good time. Um, and Leah's sister's like, mom is not happy about this. What do we think about this dynamic? Oh, and one more thing. Yes. The most important part, Pita, pita chip boy? Oh my God. I forgot about that. If you share my nudes, if you share my nudes, girl, I am coming for that ass. And I'm going to get it. And I'm going to revenge. Like, you don't share my nudes. And Leah, don't you know better? Never attach your face to a nude. Never. Go ahead and send a nude. Just don't put your face in it. I've only done the one nude, and it was chin below. Like, the <laughs> That's no, my face was not attached. I mean, you know what my chin looks like, but baby, no. It until the end. I will deny it until the end. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's not me. That's not the good lighting. <laughs> I love the scene. I love the scene, you guys. It was so freaking refreshing. And this is, you know, I, I feel like sometimes I come on in pretty strongly, whereas it almost sounds like I'm not feeling Leah, but I love Leah. I like the improper etiquette situation. Um, I, I don't like possibly what's going to happen next episode because it looks like she's she's railing against the girls and I don't necessarily love that. But this was good. And this, I want to keep peeling the, en the onion back uh, as far as like the mother and, and Leah. And I thought the sister being infused to the show was fantastic. You know, um, my big thing with this show is we can't have Sonia drunk every episode. We can't have Leah drunk every episode. We need to so sort of set stuff up. And this to me was as we talked about at the open of the show, was fantastic. Cause I don't need them all congregating yelling. Like that to me doesn't, there's no peaks and valleys. And in my housewife shows, I like a peak in a valley. And um, it just showed more Leah. And we need that because here's the weird thing. I am sort of feeling like we need something else. You know what I'm saying? Not that Leah's in Val, she's a great new cast member, but I'm like missing Barb or I'm feeling like we need more Elise, like to balance everything out. So. Um, this was a fantastic home run episode for Leah, for sure. <laughs> Allie? Um, I completely agree with that. I think, like you said earlier, we haven't been seeing a lot of Luann. So I do think maybe, I wish next episode, maybe we will see some more of her, but, um, and I know she's going through a lot now with the not drinking, but we, they are like shoving this whole drunk girl thing down her throat. We've been seeing it and I'm here for it, okay? It's great TV. But I agree, it's Sonia and then it's Leah, Sonia, Leah. And I'm excited for next episode though, just because I feel like we're about to see again, this crazy side of Leah. And I totally think it's valid that her mom is mad at her for drinking again, because we're seeing she's like a freshman in college. Like the girl can't handle her alcohol, but we have seen her handle it. Okay, we've seen her do it before. She can have like one vodka tonic or something and be fine. But then we see it on the other spectrum and it's wild and it's a lot. So I'm wondering if next episode, if she's going to do something crazy, if some more drama is going to be brought up, or if she's just going to be like a fun drunk who maybe just gets a little too crazy. May I ask one question? Do we uh, know if Leah's past includes just this alcoholism, which is what's making the mom nervous, or is there some drugs, a drug use in her earlier years to play? I just kind of mm -hmm. wondered what, what, what's happening there. I don't want to judge, but yeah. no, I'm just asking. Who knows? She's a good looking, young, hip girl in New York City. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> so let's move on to the apartment of Ramona Singer, <laughs> the apartment of Ramona Singer, where she's having the girls over. You know, one girl showed up with sunglasses. Get out of here. It's nighttime. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Dorinda comes in with a dictionary. Schoidenfreudin, baby. <laughs> Schoidenfreudin. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I love this scene because uh, Ramona's, like, showing off that she's social. And she's like, I might be 60, whatever, years old. But people come over my house. And it's hip. And we have wine. And, you know, we all network. And, and it's great. You know, and Elise comes in. And she's like, 
Yeah, nice place. Where are your condoms? Let me go check out the nightstand. <laughs> oh my God. Very, that's a lot, but I would care for it. Yeah. Care for the messiness. Yeah. Condoms in the nightstand. Yay or nay? I personally don't use them, so I don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like We're going to say condoms. yay. Safety first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's condoms in the nightstand. Yes, yes. <laughs> Always be prepared. I thought it was a great scene with Elise. I think Elise stepped up. I think like literally as Leanne said, like she's giving us Shannon Doherty older vibes. Like there's something that is really bringing her alive now. Um, I've always kind of liked the idea of Elise, whether I liked her or she just represented something that was anti, you know, she's, she's a little bit more in the Ramona world. Um, and it's fantastic. And I got to say, this has been my highest scorecard for Ramona in every season <laughs> ever. And I think it's because I, I look at like, 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 like my mother's around that age, Ramona's age. And a lot of people that we know that hit that age, they sort of just, you know, are more relaxed. It's kind of exciting and rejuvenating for her to be giggly about like, yo, I'm, I'm still a socialite and, and, and I got this rocking body. Um, and, and, you know, I think the only time it gets bad for me is the episode where she had like the birthday with this group of friends and then the other birthday with the other. I didn't like that because that seems a little like you're trying to hurt people's feelings, but acting like you didn't. But this right here, bringing people together and being proud of it, I had no problem with it at all. And I thought it was really cute. I like her new apartment. It looks like she's moved uh, lower than like she was up in the 90s before. It looks like she's right right at the 59th Street Bridge area now. It yeah. looks like she's right by Columbus Circle and that kind of area. On the east side, yeah. Uh, I mean, not Columbus Circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the, yeah. Beyond the plaza and the 50, above 59th, yeah. Exactly. Like Lincoln, almost by the Lincoln Center over there. But um, no, I totally agree. And you know what though? I do want to talk about this with Ramona. Um, you know, she is a like a hip lady and I love that about your perspective, Ronnie. You're always there to like lift women of that age up and I'm here for it. I love that. Just wanted to point that out. <laughs> but um, the one thing that Ramona did though that I didn't notice until the apartment scene I didn't notice that she had fat shamed Sonia at the spa. Yeah. She came up at the apartment scene and she's like, Ramona told me that I needed to lose 10 pounds so I could be beautiful. Like, bitch, I look good with all types of weight. And I agree. I didn't like that. I didn't hear that. But what did you guys think about this? And I like that Sonia brought her an extra large dress. <laughs> yes. And she was just like over in the corner eating the whole time. Like we got some great shots of just Sonia not caring. Um, I didn't hear it at the spot either. I actually went back because I was like, whoa, she did not say that. Um, but I couldn't find it. So maybe they just, I don't know. But anyway, bad shame on you, Ramona. That was not okay. Um, I, I don't know. Yeah, I was sad to hear it. And I feel like Sonia kind of handled it in a very mature way. Like she let her know she was hurt and that it wasn't okay, but she didn't make some big fuss about it. Like we already have so much going on right now with Dorinda and Tinsley and Sonia, you know, was upset and hurt, but she just kind of like was able to roll her eyes and, you know, put it behind her. Sonia knows she's beautiful and I don't think it really got to her, but still not okay that Ramona said that at all. This really connected to me um, because, I mean, in my adult life, I've been upwards towards 320 pounds and also at 175 pounds, and now I'm the beauty that you see today. So weight has really been a challenge for me, um, and I think where I really resonated with Sonia was if you go back to a couple episodes and she talks, uh, seasons rather, and she talks about when she was on the antidepressants and she had gained some weight and it kind of did mess with her. I felt like what Sonia said is exactly what I would say. Let it be my problem. Let me have low confidence. Let me try to overcome. But you don't tell me anything because the moment it becomes your opinion, I love myself at any body style. That doesn't mean I have my own insecurities and want to grow. And so I thought, I'm glad Sonia didn't rip her a new one, make it a big deal. She kind of did the best thing that you can do and she dismissed the F out of Ramona as if she didn't, she didn't, you know, she didn't appear in the scene. And I thought that was really, really cool. Well, that's what you're supposed to do when someone is being that ridiculous. You know, it's like, I've worked on myself for 50 something years, like Sonia, and then she's like, for you to come in and make a jab about 10 pounds. You know what, and this brings it back just to like perspective. I've dealt with a lot of weight issues myself and a lot of yo-yoing, like 20 pounds here and there, just lose 20, gain 20, lose 20, 
all the time. So I look back at all my past photos and I go, I was so thin and I'm sitting there, I was sitting there complaining at that moment about being so fat. And I'm like, I was thin at that time. It's just like, we constantly just think the worst of each other. I mean, the worst of our own. We don't need other people doing it for us. Exactly. But Leanne, I also think that it's important that she acted the way she did and the way I was vulnerable and the way you were. Because like, when I first met you, I didn't know about your yo-yo either. And I like fell in love with the person who Leanne is as a commentator, as a, as a true actor talent. And then I found out that other part of you. So there was more layers to you and more vulnerability. So I'm glad that she did that. I'm glad she didn't mask it. I think there's a lot of times where we, and especially those are on reality shows, they mask that really dark stuff. And I struggle with it myself. Like I'm a commentator working at After Buzz, you know what I mean? And I'm pushing 40. That's something people don't like to say, but there is a great power in just owning what you're going through, giving it to the world, and um, the, the fans like it. And I think that's why we really like Sonia's moment. And she wasn't drunk for the first time. Okay. And so what if she was picking out? <laughs> Let's get into the meat of the episode. You know, everything's fine. But like I said earlier, Dorinda came in with the dictionary. And while <laughs> everything was all smooth, literally the second we done, got done kissing each other's faces. <laughs> I don't like what you did yesterday. I didn't like what you did yesterday, Ramona. You know what you are? You're a Schroedenfreuder. What, how do you say that word? <laughs> I don't know for sure. <laughs> yeah. Like, Schroedenfreuder. It means like you take pleasure of other people's like misfortunes or like, or, or even as, as not as deep as like when someone falls, you find it funny, like pleasure in other people's pain. Um, and it just really pissed Ramona off. And I understand what Ramona did at the time at the spa, but it's a different day. Ramona wasn't giving you the vibes. I know you came in pissed off about it, but you literally just did what Ramona did. You want privacy. You want someone to pull you aside and then you just give it to Ramona there in front of everyone. Ramona gave it right back to her. I could see it in her eyes. She was pissed. And she was like, you know what, Drinda? I'm sorry you're so unhappy. I'm sorry you're so unhappy. And it's like, finally, we said it, the truth. Because that's what it really is. It doesn't have to do with anything but Dorinda being unhappy. So then she leaves. Ramona's like, maybe you should just go. She chases her out, crocodile tears, fake tears. <laughs> Don't leave. I just was like, oh God, <laughs> I don't want to be alone. Dorinda's like, I don't want to be alone either. And I'm like, you know what? How about you're all going to be alone? Cause no one's going to be alone. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Ronnie. Yes. <laughs> okay. Lowest rating on the scorecard in a couple of weeks is my thoughts on Dorinda. While I do still feel like she was all right when she came at Tinsley in the, in the, in the, in the bathhouse, talking about, you know, don't tell me to respect you. I was, I was okay with that. But a lot of the other parts I wasn't okay with. I think Dorinda looked beautiful in her therapy or a life coach. I think she looked beautiful coming into Ramona's house, but I do not like a calculated attack. You know what I mean? Like if that's what you're about, then either A, you don't show up or B, you, you let it on from the beginning. Because what she tried to do, I think, was to throw Ramona off, off guard. And that to me is a little unfair. Like I said, I've de defended Dorinda on a couple things, but that I didn't really like. And I also think that um, she, yeah, she doubled down on the exact thing that bugged her. So therefore it was very calculated. Like that's, she was embarrassed that she was trying to get this resolved with Tinsley and Leah and you know, the whole scenario at the bathhouse. Yet you, you purposely saw all of her friends and knew that that would embarrass the heck out of her. And I, I just thought that was not, not a hot move at all for Dorinda. And they were loving it. They were like, oh my God, this is worth being in person. The fight. <laughs> Holly, what do you think about this? That's funny. I completely agree with Ronnie. That was just so rude. And who does that? Like who just shows up to someone's house when they prepared this food and their their friends are there that you you maybe don't know or aren't that close with? That's embarrassing. Um, and she did. She waited right until that moment. Everybody was around, and it was it was cringy to watch. And I really wish Dorenda left. And I wish nobody. I wish Sonia didn't even go with her. I just wish Dorenda left and everyone else stayed and didn't care because I was so mad at her when she did that. And I was happy that Ramona came back with some fire and didn't just like sit on it and like whatever like she kind of got in her face a little bit and I was happy to see that and she called her out she is unhappy 
and stop bringing your negative, terrible energy, especially into Ramona's gorgeous new apartment with her friends. Like you're not welcome. Good vibes only, Dorinda. No. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> One thing, I'm so sorry. I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be alone either. I'm going to be alone forever. And then I'm just like, what is this? <laughs> Gosh, I am what I am. <laughs> well, I mean, all roads lead to Rome. That's the issue. The issue is where they're at in their lives, you know? And I don't know. I just, like I said, I, my comments on Dorinda positively is she looked beautiful at Life Coach. And she looked beautiful in Ramona's home. But some of the other moves were a little off this episode. And she's going to have to get this intervention. I was not, I'm not a big yeah. fan of the intervention. I feel like you could take me to the side. But it's showing that enough people maybe have already taken her to the side. Maybe we didn't see that in the edit. Um, that they're going to have to make a bigger move. So um, let's see. Well, we have already talked about it. Next episode, Leah gets crazy drunk. Um, and she definitely pulls out the Lacage moments. She's like, I'm surprised she wasn't dressed up like a drag queen yelling, I am what I am. Because <laughs> literally goes off the deep end. At one point, I see Sonia dragging her across the field. Like she's being dragged. I'm just like, girl, I can't wait to get that drunk after quarantine. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm going to like it, though, Leanne, next episode. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be a high scorecard for me with Leah, because I, I love that I am what I am. And to Lakaj, like, it's very much about you and your expression. I am what I am and not respecting the space. Like, you're going to Newport. I went to Newport for a wedding. I went to the, the, the Rosecliff Mansion, beautiful wedding last year. Like, I can't just come in. I, I'm a little bit dusty. I dress dusty. It is what it is but you have to respect the space. So I don't know how I'll feel next episode. She does not respect it. She's like, what am I gonna get kicked out of Newport? <laughs> Allie, uh, what are your predictions for this episode? I don't know. I have no idea what we're about to see. I'm ready to see it though. Um, I, I will say I love Sonia and Leah together because as, as crazy as they are, it is so entertaining. Like they could go off and do a spin-off show together or something just for <laughs> them two getting drunk the whole time. And I would be so here for it. But yeah, I, I hope that Leah, you know, I really have loved Leah this season. So I, I hope that we don't see her do something completely terrible. That kind of ruins my, my likeness of her, but we'll see. I, I figured out what I feel like we're missing this season, you two. Luann and respectively Sonia, I'm sorry, uh, Ramona, dating more. I want to see that. And I think that sparked my mind when Luann had said, obviously back a couple episodes ago when she saw the instructor or whatever, and she got excited, but also when she was getting, getting um, patted down. Uh, I'm like, you know, obviously we had a huge emotion with the whole Tom situation. That's years ago. Um, Luann is... So next episode, Sonia's like, should we go down there and get our mojo back? Like, it's coming. Good, 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 good. Yeah. It's coming. So uh, make sure to check us out next Friday, obviously, for the next after show for the Real Houses of New York City. We're here every single week. Guys, make sure to check out It's Bravo Bitch. It's a fairly new podcast, about a year old, but it's growing. Lots of guests, lots of important people are noticing. Bravo itself is tagging me in, like, posts. So make sure to follow with Bravo Bitch Podcast on Instagram. Subscribe to the Afterbus channel so you can see it live. It's fantastic. Follow all the socials because these people right here, my family, we're doing this for you guys. We love you guys. We love the support. We're, we, we're sorry we're not live. You can't engage. But leave a comment that you watched and that you enjoyed it. And I will shout you guys out next episode. We love you guys. We're doing this here for you. So make sure to follow my uh, fellow co-hosts as well because they're bringing out this content just for the love for you guys. We love you. I'm Hollywood Lee and it's my favorite day of the week. Ronnie, where can we find you? What do you want to promote? Um, all my stuff is randomlyronniejr.com that links out to where it needs to go. And you usually find me every single week supporting Leon's show on Wednesday. Uh, this week they chatted, you chatted with um, one of the below deck gals. And every week it's a real big assemblage of all Bravo shows. You know, I don't watch too much Atlanta, but I watch enough of it to kind of feel something and Beverly Hills as well. And so Leon's show kind of encompasses it all together. So each and every week, I'm not only watching, but I'm also commenting because it's a really great show, so. Thank you, Ronnie, you're the best, I love that. Mm -hmm. Allie, where can we find you? What do you want to promote, babe? Yes, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Alexandra James. And I also do some Bravo covering for Camp Getaway on Tuesdays right here at AfterBuzz at 6 p.m. I've heard things, what do you think of it? 
It's it's really interesting. It's about camp, but for adults. So they just go and get drunk like you, uh, it's, <laughs> you know, it's like this, the lake's there and you're in cabins and you have counselors, but um, you go clubbing at two in the morning and maybe go skinny dipping in the lake. It's really, it's a fun time and it's a fun after show for sure. You guys should check it out. It's an orgy in the forest. Yes. I'm gonna have uh, Allie and Eric. Is Erica Edwards on your panel? No. Oh, she's not. I, I heard her. Oh, maybe she was just talking. Maybe she was uh, originally and then got off of it. But yeah. Well, regardless, I'm going to have Allie come on. It's Bravo Bitch to talk about Camp Getaway. Um, yes. I'm going to have Erica on eventually. Oh, that's what she's on. She's doing Worst Cooks in America. And Sonia's on that. Yes. So, uh, make sure to pop into It's Bravo Bitch on Wednesdays. We love you guys. And we'll see you next week. Bye, After Buzzers. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.